Hello and welcome back to Delta V for the third time. We're going to be hopping back in with the Lazy Orbit. Last time we had just come back to the station. We sold all of our ores. Uh, we're almost to 200,000 euros. And we're going to do some upgrades. Um, one thing we're going to do right off the bat, we're going to get the mining laser. Because... Oof, wow, these are expensive. Okay, uh, maybe a microwave emitter. Yeah. Alright. 70,000 euros. So it's going to be a whole lot easier to mine than using the mass driver all the time. So, we're going to grab that. And we're finally going to... I really want to upgrade our engines and our RCS, but if I do that, you see that we have these warnings here. For instance, if I upgrade it to any of these that I can afford, uh, we're going to be low on thermal, um, thermal energy, thermal power. Our reactor won't be able to keep up its temperature, and as a consequence, we'll run out of power all the time. So what we might need to do is we could probably just, okay, we're going to do a little bit of upgrades. We're going to grab this thruster. It's a lot of thrust. Um, actually, do I want that? Exhaust velocity is trash. 18, 15, we're actually going to, we're going to grab this. It's got way more thrust than our current one. Its exhaust velocity is 3 kilometers per second higher. It only has a little bit more propellant consumption. Well, here we go. Yeah, 83 versus uh, 50. And it's gimbaled, which I'm not sure how much that'll help. We will have to worry about this heat our thermal power but we can maybe take care of this so we're gonna grab this and look at our RCS thrusters this is 200 kilonewtons of thrust I really like gimbaled thrusters because um, they're just more f like efficient and they also give you a wider range of motion They're all really expensive. These are decent for now. Alright, yeah, these are decent. I'll tune these a little bit. So, actually, we'll do that now. We're going to go to tuning. We're going to... Are, yep, okay, these are RCS thrusters. We're gonna give them. We're gonna bump them up to 250 kilonewtons. Mass driver, we're gonna give a little bit more power. We're no longer gonna be mining with this. This is. I'm giving it power just so it uh, impacts more energy into enemy ships. The microwave emitter, we don't want to give too much energy into the rocks. So what I hear. Um, cut oh, okay. um, setting microwave frequency to match the water resonance frequency closely will result in faster heating but much lower penetration. Increase high. Okay. We don't, we're not worried about self defense because that's what the mass driver is for. So we're going to increase this. This is now useless for self defense. That's okay. And the rest of this should be fine. We're actually going to increase this to make our reactor run a little hot. Kind of offset the um, the new thrusters and engine we got a little bit. And you can see this little simulation. So it's saying like it's it's showing me as the ship you know 
gets into the ring and fires its thrusters, what happens. So as it starts off, we're going to have a little power. But as I get into like cruising speeds, uh, the reactor is going to spike at 4,000 and then drop back down to hopefully around 3,600. Um, everything, I don't have any warnings. Everything looks fine. Power balance. But we're gonna we're gonna make this even better. So we're gonna go back to equipment. And we're going to uh, upgrade our ultra capacitor. So we got more stored power. We're also gonna upgrade our power plant to a twin turbine. And that might be all we can do for now. We can upgrade our autopilot and see. Sure, we'll upgrade our autopilot. It gives us more things. Uh, each autopilot does things a little differently, so obviously you can have no autopilot. This is like the most basic one. Um, <clears throat> this one will give you um, collision warnings. I'm pretty sure the... I'm pretty sure you need one of these autopilots to use gimbaled thrusters. I could be wrong. I feel like that's the thing. Uh, Heads-up displays is just... Um, like you'll see up here. It changes the display. I really like the base. I'm really used to this. Uh, it's comfortable. I'll just keep it as is. The reconnaissance craft. So the way the game treats it, right? The, the way it explains it. You can see your ship in the ring through a top-down view because you're actually looking at your ship through a satellite feed, right? Um... So yeah, these are these are the reconnaissance craft or the satellite feeds that you're viewing your ship through, and they all do different things. This one's you know just the basic one, and they also have different viewing ranges. So you'll see this one has a, a range of six kilometers, which means you can view scroll out you know wider camera angle. It even tells you up here. This one only has five kilometers, but what it also does is this the Which would show me. One of these shows like um, what's inside of rocks. Yeah, here we go. This one gives you like a little scanner. You click on a rock and it kind of tells you what's inside of it. But yeah, I suppose that could be useful for picking which asteroids you want to get. And this one gives you like a, a a density map of the ring system, so you kind of know where hot spots are in the ring. I like this one. And then this one is really good for if you're running a drone build. Um, you can set waypoints and like queue orders, like telling a drone to go grab something. It's really nice. But that's basically all of our money. We did some good upgrades though. I'm pretty happy about that. Did we crash last time? No. Um, we have a little bit of damage. Nothing horrible. We're still insured. Let's just replace a couple thrusters that are low. This nuclear reactor, I'm gonna leave it this time, but if it gets any more damage, we're gonna repair it. We'll replace it, either one, when we get back. Um, let me see if there's anything we can do in services. Nope, okay. Let's go back up. Gotta wait. Seven hours, hotel, and we're ready. Refill my propellant, mass driver ammo. I don't have any nano drones, which is like the drone system. And then um, you can actually select to come all the way out here. I think the price actually goes down when you wait. I would. Speaking of astrogators, decreasing the price of astrogation. Let's actually hire one. Because I currently only have a, a geologist, a pilot, and a mechanic. And they're still really bad on experience. An astrogator will help us out a lot. This one's fine. This one's actually decent. A journeyman for a low salary. Okay. 
So, now let's go out. And you can already see the price dropped. It was like uh, 11,000, 12,000, it's down to 9,000. And it'll get lower as we get uh, more experience on this guy. Where should we go? Let's go back to this tiny little. No, that's not worth it. When you have more money, uh, a better ship and more dives. Sometimes it's just worth, oh, you can actually see ships flying around, see that? Um, so I guess this is a live map of the rings. But yeah, sometimes it's worth it just, uh, you know, uh, do your Hoffman transfer directly into where you want to go instead of starting at the beginning. But when you're just starting out and you're poor, this is the cheapest option. And it's okay, we can fly for a little bit. Alright, we're in. Let's get our ship deeper into the rings. We'll turn off what we don't need. Let's we'll just keep the microwave emitter on. This is the microwave emitter, by the way. It's kind of like um, it heats up the water and expands it inside rocks and then cracks it apart. It's a decent mining tool. Longer than a mining laser, though. Like, takes longer to crack the rocks, but it's still way better than a... Um... There's a ship north of me. ETH two nine nine two. All right, Kevin. We'll let them talk while we fly. I'm already enjoying the new engine and the RCS. Uh, tuning we did. I feel way more maneuverable. You can actually see that I can change your velocity and turn the ship a lot better. See, look how quickly this responds. Of course, that'll change, um, you know, it depends on how heavy we are. Over here, you can see the total ship mass. This will go up as we grab more rocks. It'll also go down as we use more fuel. And each component has its own mass Big LiDAR contact. Trade opportunities. Okay, this is actually a good opportunity for us to skip the whole flying to our location. So, we actually got coordinates from a friend of one of our crew members. So we're gonna go to the Astrogator. And we're actually gonna, oh wow, this is deep. This is all the way in the, uh, what's that even called? Can I see the map? I'm not sure, but that's the first gap. We're gonna go there. Um. Velocity. So when you're doing, and I'll, I'll just show you at 50 meters a second because we're here. When you're doing transfers in a dive, it's a little bit different than going home. Going home, you just click, you know, uh, prime station, plot a course, you stop your ship, and it automatically goes. When you're doing a transfer in the ring, you actually have to match a velocity in a certain direction to get there. So let me stop our ship. And the slower your velocity, the easier it is to, you know, like, the slower your velocity here, you can actually go all the way down to 10 meters a second. The easier it'll be to get the transfer going, but time actually progresses in the game. So for us, I've got, what was it, like 11,000? Actually, I've only got like $1,000 left because I spent money getting out here. It, I don't want time to pass so much that I have to pay my crew again before I'm even home, you know? So we're gonna go 50 meters a second. And now we have to, we're just gonna stop. Now we have to match velocity. We gotta get around 50 without interacting with rocks, which is a little difficult. If rocks enter our path, it'll cancel the, uh, yeah, see proximity alert. It'll cancel the trajectory calculations. There we go. I know we're not going exactly 50, we're going 40. You can get close, as long as you're close enough. Close enough. And we got it. So yeah, transfers in between sections of the ring are a little bit more complex. 
Alright, we are out in the middle of nowhere. But remember, there's a big LiDAR contact out here. That's why the screen's blue. So, let's see what we can find. See anything on the visual field? There's something, like, way down there. Let's see if our pilot sees anything. Is it... You see this? Um, so each one of these dots represents a LiDAR contact. This is a really big group, so we're gonna go down there. What is that? Even our, um, autopilot sees it. It's probably a station. Get closer. You can see these little tick marks on the autopilot. Oh, it's a massive rock. Wow. Is this the contact? What is this place? This place is awesome. A moonlit. Okay. I think you go inside these. Careful. I'm not sure if you can go inside all of them, but there should be an entrance somewhere. This is cool. Can I break it? It does not look like I can break it. Not with this little thing. This is cool. So my Ashigator also knows where this is forever, so I can just transfer here. Is that the entrance? Oh, there is something in there. Is that a ship? Oh, there's little ships on the surface. Oh, is this a station? Wow. It's just cool. You see how it's kind of like transparent? So this is like inside the rock. We're gonna go in there. Who did I find? Look at all these little ships. The space bar, huh? Achievement. Can I contact the space bar? I can dock. Okay, we're gonna dock. The dark arm just lit up. Are these ships below me? I think they're below me. Yep. Don't. Don't. All right. R and R. Two hundred credits. This is a cool little location. I wonder what else we can do here in the future. Is that it? No more conversation? This is really cool. I know you can trade with stations. Some stations. They'll ask you for like refined materials or something like that and pay you like top dollar for it. I don't think there's any more conversation. I can't hail them. So we're gonna go back out. And, um, I guess we're gonna go west, back toward the ring. Let go, please. I wanna on dock. Thank you. Okay, that's pretty cool. to keep an eye out for LiDAR contacts that look like massive clumps like that. So thankfully, it's pretty empty space out here, just a few little rocks. 
shouldn't take us too long to get back since we can get up to speed. In fact, how fast do you think we can get away with? 120? All right, we'll stop at a 140 and we'll just uh, use the main thruster to guide us back and forth and keep an eye on the autopilot. It's kind of faint though, so we'll just do it by sight. back to the rings <laughs> you can see on the visual feed up there rocks are starting to get more dense that's pretty cool it's a nice little find right off the bat. Much better than just flying into the first 20. Oh, we're here. Yeah, we'll start mining. We'll just start mining and moving west. so much easier than using the um, mass driver. Ooh, beryllium. Wow! Look at all that beryllium. A thousand kilograms? Wow. What a, what a rock. We are 250 kilometers in. The rocks out here must be fantastic. That was awesome. Let's crack the rest of that. Yes, please. Dude, it's a full beryllium rock. Give me. I'm staying in this area. I'm gonna have to find out what beryllium is used for in real life. Let's see if the rocks down here, like just a little bit south of where we we're mining, are the same composition. What do we got? Well, that's silver. It's tungsten. Tungsten's really good. Ooh, another beryllium, too. Wow. Wow, it's 400 kilograms, too. Okay, this place is loaded. Well, we're gonna come back and use this, um... We're gonna Hoffman transfer to that station. Wait, what? Before we left, I saw... Saw a report derelict to take back. Huh. What? Where? Radar not. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna stock up on our. We're gonna get our cargo hold full. We're gonna transfer over to that derelict, and we're gonna take it home. We are hitting the mother load on this dive. Oh, more beryllium. Look at it. Uh, that one's kind of trash. But the fact that you, I'm even finding it so frequent, it's just nuts. Yeah. Let's break this big rock. I might break it with the mass driver if this doesn't crack. Oh, here we go. Manipulator arms trying to drag me in. Manipulator arm is also magnetic, so it will drag you in. What are these? We see tungsten. Gladium. What we got here? More palladium? No, 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 tungsten. Beryllium. Big piece? Oh, yeah. 
pretty good piece. I'll let it hit the rock so it slows down. See how slow, though, that these are flying off? We can actually impart less energy with mining lasers, but this is a really good upgrade rather than shooting them with the mass driver. Alright. Two really good brilliant rocks. And our GL just leveled up. Fantastic. We're also gonna grab that tungsten. Wait, that's not tungsten, that's uh bolivium. Oh, see that? Kinda of fell out. Grab the brilliant first, it's way more expensive. What is pinging? Might be a ship closing in. Wonder if really valuable asteroids, or maybe just big asteroids, ping the lighter as well. It would make sense, maybe. Slow down a little bit. That ping's really loud now. Maybe it's pinging the station. That beryllium just ran right into us. It's a good piece too. That's tungsten over there. We are making a killing out here. I don't think I've ever found this much brilliant. So I need to go back a little bit north. I don't want to leave this zone where the brilliant is until I'm full. Oop, nope. Tungsten? That's a good tungsten rock. I need to set priorities on this arm. It's not worth it. See how the arm tries to grab, like, I don't, I'm not sure what it's priority. The first it sees. Uh, it's not worth it. But it can be a little annoying. Maybe I should set that right now. So let's, let's look at this. So, for every object. Okay, so every rock has water in it. So we don't need to enable the water itself. Minimum value for priority. Or maybe it's just been a value for, like, I'm not going to touch anything unless it's this. Let's drop it down to five, four thousand, right? So I should at least weed out everything that I usually don't grab. I wonder what the distance on this little laser or microwave is. Get iron now? I feel like we've left the uh, zone where all the good rocks are. Maybe not, I see real them. Some more tungsten too. Okay, I lied. These are really good rocks. Let's grab the tungsten. And we'll come back for the beryllium. Keep an eye on it. We'll also grab that one down there. So why not? Oop, see we ran into a, a power issue. The reactor is not keeping up. Maybe I should uh, tune the reactor a little hotter. 
I want to be able to make those really sharp maneuvers without running out of power. Oh, we well, did not grab the right thing. I wonder why I prioritized the rock over Brilliant. Let's mine that so we don't run into it. Brilliant just ran past us. It's a bad piece though. Oh, a little messy. Messy, messy, messy. We almost hit those rocks. Let's see what's in these rocks. And we'll head back north. I don't want to get too far away from that spot we found. Although these rocks look to be depositing lots of brilliant. The concentrations up north are really good. Oh! <gasps> Thousand kilograms again. Wow. Give me that. Come back. I should have known with how fast that was going. We'll catch it. Gotta dry, uh, fly a little recklessly, but we'll get it. Just to probably grab that one over there. Come on. Okay. We'll quickly put it in. And hard stop. And we're back north. Everything worked out. Something's popping up. Is that a derelict? Or maybe a life pod? ETH 2074. Let's go look at it. Something happened. And that is not the... No, see the radar anomaly. Uh, the derelict is all the way over here. So whatever it is that's on screen is not it's a random event not too far away it's out into the deep again in the right we yeah, have basically just get on this way This has been a really good run. Going a little fast. Is it moving? Or are we just overshooting? Alright. Go this way. Maybe it's if it's moving, it could be a pirate. No, my screen's blue. Maybe we just overshot. I'm okay with 120,000 uh, rocks. We're not completely full. We don't... Okay, what we're gonna do, we're gonna grab this derelict, and then on the next dive, we're gonna come to this radar anomaly and grab the other derelict. This actually might be the extended KR-37 with the extended cargo bay. I really like it, because you can also process more with the extended cargo bay. It weighs a little bit more, but that's that's definitely a longer ship than me. We're gonna be good. Okay, we have to be careful. Um, your crew will volunteer to board it and fly it back to station, but it can be dangerous. Your crew can blow up. <laughs> Because they'll go over there, they'll turn it on, and the reactor could die or something. It's just about time. So I'm just going to um, tow it. What we have to do, though, is we have to turn off our S thrusters to slow down. Because if we thrust the engine on the closed gravitas, it'll blow up. And we do not want it to blow up on us. It's okay if it takes hits. So you can actually shoot it like a million times with the mass driver. It won't blow up. Heating the reactor is what causes spaceships to blow up. So we're going to get right in front of it. Grab it. 
But thankfully, we're all, all the way out here in the deep. We've caught it, and it shouldn't get away from us. We're gonna try and point towards the west. Hold course. And we're going back to the station, baby. That's our first salvage right there. And if I'm right, this is actually a ship I really want. Nice, we got it. First salvage. I'm pretty excited with that. I think one of our crew just leveled up too on the way back. 122,000 in rocks. It's really good. Not as big as our last hole, but... So we're going to go to our fleet here. And you can see this is just the standard K-37. Yep. Huh. Ooh. Actually, I don't think I've seen this one yet. This is, this is a rare one, I think. I've seen a different variant that was like the cargo holds four meters larger. This is actually the K-44. This is the prototype replacement for the K-37. This is interesting. Prototype of K-44 with only few units ever built. Designed as a replacement for K-37. K-44 featured much longer cargo bay and built-in MPD generators. Nice. To provide power to the ship. The magneto plasma dynamic generators provided to per provided to be not reliable enough for service and most prototypes still use standard issue turbines instead so we're gonna switch to it we're actually gonna see what kind of equipment it's got run on it that's really cool that we found a prototype it's gonna be a little heavier but um kind of engines running so it's running the standard basic engine it's got a military grade turbine, which is nice, but because they're expensive. It's got the triple ultra capacitor, which is nice. It's got an upgraded fuel rod system. We, we're only running the 4X, so the fact that it's already got the 8X is really good. So it's pretty bare bones, like super bare bones. The power, like like the description said, the power is actually really nice. Um, so we're gonna switch to this actually. So what we're gonna do? So we're gonna go back to our fleet. We're gonna go to the lazy orbit, switch ships. We're going to quickly see if anything needs a repair because we have insurance. Use the insurance on the nuclear reactor to replace it. Because you can actually make a profit by selling the ship in good condition. And it's also actually not coming out of my budget. I'm using the insurance money. <laughs> you could say I'm insurance scamming. They're doing an insurance scam. So now that this is repaired, and everything on it will be sold for value as well. So we're not gonna, we don't have to worry. We'll get all the money back we put into the ship and we'll put it right into the ship we found. Plus, we'll get money for the hull and stuff. So we're making a really nice profit. It's basically like we're salvaging our starter ship for all the money to change ships and upgrade. So we're gonna go back to the closed Gravitas. We're gonna say goodbye to the Lazy Orbit. Sell it for 500K. Look at that. Now it's time to upgrade. Interesting, look at this. I didn't notice this. We actually have two hard points and two low stress hard points. This is gonna be weird. Okay, so. Oh no. Did that just mess up? I think I just messed up. We're not going to be able to salvage. Hmm. 
that hurts. <laughs> that hurts quite a bit. This ship will not have a um, salvage arm on it. I didn't realize. That's okay. So what we're going to have to do, I guess? No, it's not okay. Crap. It's not good. Because we still have that other salvage ship out there we need to grab. What does the dealer have for sale? We could rebuy the Lazy Orbit. We're going to do that. <laughs> lazy Orbit, come back. And we lost money. Switching back and forth. I feel... I feel bad. We're going to keep this in storage for now. We will use this as a mining ship, like a pure mining ship. Um, the Lazy Orbit's a really good, like, jack of trades. So we'll keep that, and we'll keep this in our fleet. I'll have to figure out what to do with this. Because I still want to, I still want to grab, let me make sure it has everything. Yeah, it still has everything. Uh, I'm gonna quickly turn the reactor up a little bit more. Make sure it doesn't need repairing. It doesn't. And, um, yeah, we're gonna go grab that other salvage real quick. We lost a little bit of money, but we'll make up for it. So, uh, I don't know where the salvage is exactly, but it doesn't quite matter. Okay, here we go. We're going to Emily. doesn't really matter. We're just going to... We can't transfer directly there. I mean, we can, but it's going to cost us a lot of money to do from the station. What we can do is we can quickly go to the rings, and we'll just astro navigate to the radar anomaly. And I think these have a timer. If you don't go back to them in two months here, uh, you'll lose the location of them. I'm gonna run into stuff. These rocks are. Let's turn that off. Oop, we're going too fast. We're not fast enough. Um, I didn't realize that was backwards. There we go. Let's quickly talk to this pilot. Never know if they have anything good for us. No, I don't need a big man. I guess you can hire, like, bodyguards. But, pretty confident in my combat abilities. It's okay that we lost, like, I know we lost 40,000 buying and selling our ship like that, unnecessarily. But the salvage arm cannot be under understated how valuable it is. Like, unless this ship... This might be a life pod. Nope. There's a pirate here. See that red? I don't know if the pirate is alive or not. Does the pirate know one of my crew? I guess one of my crew used to be a pirate. Nah, no, you're not going. I did find salvage. You're my salvage. That ship is losing reactor mass very significantly. It's actually out. It just ran out of uh, Delta V. 
So it's dead in the water. We're gonna grab the life pod. I guarantee those pirates were uh, like laying a trap. That's why my crew member's like, hey, there's a derelict after, I'm pretty sure that station is a pirate station. So when we went there and she's like, there's a derelict. That's why the pirates knew about it because they set up a trap. We need to get this in the cargo. Come on. Please. Now we need to go salvage the ship. Once again, when we get there, we'll have to turn off our reverse thrusters. So, if you can get the first couple shots on an enemy ship, you're you're basically okay. I mean, they could still get a lucky shot on you. But taking damage in this game hurts, really hurts. Like, as you saw this guy, I popped holes in his reactor, in his fuel tanks, and once he's out of Delta V, he's just dead in the water, and that can happen to you too. Now that we have our salvage and our beacon, we're not going to do any mining, and we're going to go back. I'm going to have to manually stop the ship because I turned off the reverse thrusters. I have to do it very carefully. I might turn on the reverse thrusters once the ship rotates again, not facing me. Maybe not. I, like, I don't want to blow up the ship. That'd be bad. That gotta stop us. Okay, now we can turn this around. Slow and steady. Slow and steady. Okay. Take us home. All right, we we got two salvage ships today. That's fantastic. One of them a prototype model, which I'm excited to um, view. And this one we're gonna sell probably. It looks like a standard K37. And we got an easy 50k make up for our loss. That was a good turn of events. Okay, let's go to our fleet. The Saturn... Sat Saturnian receipt? Saturnian? What a weird name. Uh, it is not a special variant. Let's see what equipment it has. Just curious. Mass driver. Mm, nothing fantastic. Honestly, a really base model. Remember, let's repair it. Especially like reactor. The really expensive parts. It's all coming out of insurance, so it's okay. Everything else, not that expensive. So now we'll go sell it. I should have checked the price beforehand to show you how much. So we'll switch back to Lazy Orbit. We're gonna sell the Saturnians receipt for 330,000. Nice. All right, we're up to 450,000. Well, that was a really good run, and I'm excited to test out this ship. It looks interesting. It looks like it'll be a good mining ship. I'm sad about the uh, salvage capabilities being missing, but I'm sure we can find something out. We could probably put point defense lasers on either side of it. Yeah, that could actually work. Okay, I'll we'll have to try that next time. Alright, I'm going to leave you guys here. This was a really good run. Uh, we get, did two deep dives today. And we're going to check out the ne uh, new ship on the next time.
I'll see you guys.